The first question was, write the voltage versus current and the current versus voltage equation um, for each one of the resistor, the inductor, and the capacitor. And express that with words. Let's do part A for a resistor. For a resistor, um, we can write that the voltage is Ri or that the current is V over R. And in words, we say the voltage across the resistor is proportional to the current through it. Part B for the inductor. We can write that V is LDIDT for the inductor or that the current can be written like this. In words, we say in an inductor, the voltage across it is proportional to how quickly the current is changing with time. And for the capacitor, part C, we can write I is CDVDT or its inverse and say in a capacitor, the current is proportional to how quickly the voltage is changing with time in that capacitor. Now for question two. For each one of the branches defined in our class in MNA, write the associated equation and the corresponding words that we use to describe that equation. Well, there are five types of branches that we introduced. The R branch, in that one we said the current is voltage of the origin minus voltage of the destination of the current divided by the resistance of the branch. Right? Right. And for the other branches, for the RV branch, the current is voltage of the origin minus voltage of the destination plus or minus the value of the source depending on whether it's helping or opposing the current divided by the resistance in the branch. For I branches and RI branches, which we nicknamed piece of cakes, the current is plus or minus the value of the current source depending on the way we choose the direction for the current in that branch. For an evil branch, the current is unknown, but we have a voltage equation. The voltage of the positive node is equal to the voltage of the negative node plus the value of the voltage source. And now we go with question three. The main one, we are to solve that circuit, find all voltages or currents, and find all powers everywhere. Hmm. Okay, let's begin by identifying the different nodes. The reference node, node number one, and node number two. Okay, what about uh, this node? Do we need to call that node three and write another equation for that? We could do that. However, we already know that the voltage of this node is 10 volts with respect to the reference. So why writing another equation? Just say that that is node 10 volts. And now what is the next step? Define the directions for currents in every branch. This one and this one and this one and this one. What about this one? Oh, that's given and so is this one. Okay, if that is good. Let's say that A plus 1 is 3 ohms and then B plus 3 is 5 ohms. And now we write the MNA equations. The first one is the control equation for Ix, this controlling variable that says Ix actually is V1 divided by 3 ohms. Bingo. And then we write a KCL equation for node 1 and for node 2, for node 1. Currents that go in, this one, 10 volts minus V1 divided by 5. This is this term. That is equal to Ix and half Ix. Check. KCL for node 2. Currents that go in, 0 0.5 Ix. And this one, this one is 10 volts minus V2 divided 8 plus 0 0.5 Ix. That is equal to the current leaving the node V2 over 2. Check. We have three equations and three unknowns. V1, Ix, and V2. We enter those equations in our calculator. Like so, the control equation, KCL1 and KCL2, we ask the calculator to solve for V1, V2, and Ix. We push a key and we get the solutions. 
Now we know what is the voltage of V1 with respect to the reference, V2 with respect to the reference, and even the control current IX is known. Shy of one amp, flowing downwards. But the next step is about finding power in every element there. To find power, we know that we use the formula power is voltage times current. In any element, that formula works everywhere. Hmm. Okay, but don't we have simplifying formulas? Yes, we do. For a resistor, we know that the power is also Ri squared. And uh, there's another one that I'm not mentioning right now. But let's say that I insist on using power is V times I, which after all is a very powerful one. It works every single time. There are no exceptions for that formula. So that is the beauty of that. Well, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, what is this current? This current here. Oh, that current is 10 volts minus V1, which is known, 2.8571, divided by 5 ohms. Check. So we can calculate that and store it away. And what is this voltage? This voltage. Well, that voltage is 10 volts minus V1, minus 2.8571. Oh, we have the voltage in this resistor. We have the current through the resistor. We can compute the power there. We can do the same everywhere. Let's do it once more in this one. What is the current? V2 divided by 2 ohms. V2 is known. is 2.7619. Okay, okay, okay. Divide that by 2. You get the current. What is the voltage across this resistor? Oh, V2 minus V reference. Oh, that is only 2.7619 volts. Oh, multiply voltage times current. And we get the power in that 2 ohm resistor. And you can do the same here and here as well. All right. What about sources? All the sources. In the sources, we do exactly the same. We know the current here, Ix, right? The current here is, is this one. This one. 0.9524 amps. Excellent. So that means that this current here is half that, 0.9525. Half that. So this current is known. What about the voltage? Hmm. Let's see. Let's see. If I am assuming that the voltage is like this, I'm saying that node 1 is higher than node 2, which is true. Check it out. It is true. So the voltage across this source, written like that, high-low, is V1 minus V2. This V1 minus this V2, that is that voltage multiplied by the current, that is the power in the source. What about absorbing or delivering? Well, check it out. This current is half Ix, and Ix is positive. This current is positive, flowing to the right. And the voltage of node 1 is higher than the voltage of node 2. So actually, this current is flowing downhill, which means that this source is absorbing. Absorbing. Oh, it's absorbing. What about uh, this source? Well, let's see. We computed the current here. 10 minus V2 divided by 8. And this current, 10 minus V1 divided by 5. Mm -hmm. And now use, use simply a KCL Gauss surface in this node. And we say this current in this source evil current and all, that is just the sum of this current and this current, which are already known. So now we have that current flowing uphill, and it's so many amps, multiply that times 10 volts, and you get the power in this source. Hmm, just eyeballing that, is that it? Absorb power or delivery power? Let's see, let's see, the way I drew it is flowing uphill, so I drew it as if actually the source is delivering power, but I need to check to see if this current is positive in the assumed direction. Is it now? Let's see. 10. This voltage is lower than 10, so this current is actually positive the way I drew it. And V1 is lower than 10 volts, so this current is also positive the way I, I drew it. So that means that this current is really going to be positive the way I drew it. So this source is actually delivering power, and it's the only element that is delivering power in this circuit. Thank you very much.